Welcome to Celestial Chronicles, where we dive into the enchanting myths that have shaped civilizations. Today, we're embarking on a journey through the ancient tales of Egyptian gods, whose stories are not just legends, but the very fabric of history. I in the depths of ancient Egypt lies a tapestry of myths and legends, woven with threads of divine intrigue and mortal drama. Join me as we embark on a journey through the timeless tales of the Egyptian pantheon, where gods and goddesses reign supreme, shaping the very fabric of existence itself. Have you ever wondered how the universe came into being? What forces shaped the cosmos and set the stage for life as we know it? These questions have echoed through the corridors of time, drawing us ever closer to the enigmatic origins of creation. But our story doesn't begin with mere happenstance or cosmic coincidence. No, it begins with chaos itself, the primordial abyss from which all things spring forth. From this swirling void emerged the first gods, beings of immense power and unfathomable wisdom. Yet, amidst the chaos, one god rose above the rest, the radiant sun god R.A. With a voice that could command the heavens and a gaze that could pierce the darkest depths, R.A. brought order to the cosmos, casting light upon the shadows of creation. But Ra's sovereignty was not unchallenged. For in the heart of the divine court, jealousy and betrayal simmered, waiting to erupt into the annals of history. And thus, the stage was set for the epic saga of Osiris and Seth, a tale of love, betrayal, and redemption. Stay with me as we unravel the intricate tapestry of Egyptian mythology, delving deep into the divine lineage of the gods, the conflicts that shaped their world, and the enduring legacy they left behind. For in the heart of these ancient tales lies the key to understanding not only the past but also the very essence of what it means to be human. Join me on this odyssey through the sands of time, where gods walk among mortals and miracles are woven into the very fabric of existence. Welcome to the world of Egyptian mythology, where legends are born and destinies are written in the stars. Chapter 1, Creation of the Universe. In the vast expanse of chaos, where darkness and emptiness reigned supreme, there existed a boundless void pregnant with potentiality. From the depths of this primordial abyss emerged the first stirrings of consciousness, the nascent essence of what would come to be known as gods. Among these celestial beings, none shone brighter than R.A., the sun god, whose radiant brilliance pierced through the veils of darkness and illuminated the void with the promise of creation. With each pulse of his divine energy, R.A. infused the cosmos with vitality, giving rise to the celestial bodies that would populate the heavens. Yet, amidst the splendor of his creation, R.A. felt a profound yearning within his heart, a longing for companionship and purpose. And so, with a gesture of divine will, he cast forth his tears into the void, each droplet containing the essence of life itself. From these tears emerged the first mortals, beings of flesh and blood imbued with the divine spark of Ra's own essence. They wandered the newly formed world, marveling at its beauty and wonder, their hearts filled with awe and reverence for their creator. But R.A., in his infinite wisdom, foresaw the dangers that lurked on the horizon. He knew that if he were to allow his offspring to proliferate unchecked, they would inevitably grow restless and rebellious, seeking to challenge his divine authority and disrupt the delicate balance of the cosmos. And so, with a heavy heart, R.A. issued a decree to the gods, forbidding them from siring children of their own. For he knew that only by maintaining strict control over the forces of creation could he ensure the continued stability of the universe and forestall the encroaching shadows of chaos and discord. Chapter 2, Osiris's Reign and Seth's Betrayal As the golden sun dipped below the horizon, casting a warm glow over the land of Egypt, Osiris, the noble god of fertility and agriculture, stood at the helm of his kingdom. His reign was marked by prosperity and abundance, as fields flourished under his gentle touch, and the people of Egypt thrived under his benevolent rule. With a heart as vast as the Nile itself, Osiris governed with wisdom and compassion, enacting laws to ensure justice for all who dwelled within his domain. Under his guidance, civilization blossomed, and the arts and sciences flourished, bringing forth a golden age of enlightenment and prosperity. But amidst the splendor of Osiris's reign, a shadow lurked in the heart of his own brother, Seth. Consumed by envy and resentment, Seth coveted the throne that rightfully belonged to Osiris, his ambition burning like a wildfire in the darkness. Driven by his insatiable hunger for power, Seth concocted a sinister plot to overthrow his brother and claim the throne for himself. In the dead of night, as the stars shimmered overhead and the Nile whispered secrets to the moon, Seth struck with the stealth of a serpent, his treacherous hand wielding death like a blade. With a single, merciless blow, Seth felled Osiris, his brother's lifeblood staining the waters of the Nile crimson as his body sank beneath the surface. 
The once proud god of fertility lay broken and lifeless, a victim of Seth's insidious betrayal. But even in death, Osiris's legacy endured, his spirit transcending the mortal realm to reign over the afterlife as the divine judge of the dead. And though Seth may have claimed victory in the mortal realm, his treachery would ultimately be his undoing, for the gods themselves would not forget the blood that stained his hands. Chapter 3, Isis's Resurrection of Osiris. Isis, consumed by grief at the loss of her beloved husband Osiris, the god of the afterlife and fertility, vowed to bring him back from the brink of death. With unwavering determination, she embarked on a perilous quest that led her to the farthest reaches of the underworld. Descending into the dark abyss, Isis navigated treacherous obstacles and faced formidable adversaries, all in her relentless pursuit of Osiris's scattered remains. Guided by her innate magic and unwavering love, she pieced together the shattered fragments of Osiris's body, painstakingly reassembling him piece by piece. But her journey was far from over. With the remnants of Osiris's form restored, Isis called upon the ancient rites of resurrection, weaving intricate spells and incantations to breathe life back into his mortal shell. With a burst of divine energy, Osiris stirred from his slumber, his once lifeless form now imbued with the spark of life once more. As Osiris rose from the depths of death, a newfound sense of purpose filled his being. Empowered by Isis's magic, he ascended to the throne of the afterlife, his reign marked by wisdom, compassion, and boundless love for his subjects. From the realm of the dead, Osiris watched over the souls of the departed, guiding them on their journey to the next life with care and reverence. Together, Isis and Osiris ruled over the afterlife, their love transcending the boundaries of mortality and immortality alike. And though their tale is one of tragedy and triumph, it serves as a timeless reminder of the enduring power of love, magic, and the eternal bond between husband and wife. Chapter 4, Horus's Quest for Vengeance. In the climactic showdown between Horus and Seth, the fate of Egypt hung in the balance. Horus, fueled by a righteous fury and guided by the wisdom of his divine lineage, marshaled the support of the gods to confront Seth's tyranny head-on. The battlefield trembled as the two titans clashed, their powers colliding with earth-shattering force. Lightning crackled across the sky, and thunder roared like the wrath of the heavens themselves. Horus, wielding the sacred symbols of his birthright, stood resolute against Seth's onslaught, every blow a testament to his determination and resolve. But Seth, the embodiment of chaos and destruction, fought with a ferocity born of desperation. His dark powers surged forth like a tempest, threatening to engulf Horus and all who dared stand in his way. Yet, despite the odds stacked against him, Horus pressed forward, drawing upon the strength of his allies and the unwavering support of the gods. In a climactic moment of triumph, Horus unleashed a final, devastating blow, shattering Seth's defenses and casting him down from his throne of power. With a roar that echoed across the heavens, Horus emerged victorious, his rightful place as ruler of the gods secured for all eternity. And so, the reign of Seth came to an end, his tyranny vanquished by the righteous fury of Horus and the united strength of the Egyptian pantheon. With order restored and justice served, Horus ascended to his rightful place as the protector of Egypt, ensuring peace and prosperity for generations to come. Chapter 5, Ra's Journey and Battles In the vast expanse of the Egyptian cosmos, Ra, the mighty sun god, reigned supreme over all creation. With divine authority, he embarked on a perilous journey each day, guiding the sun across the heavens and into the depths of the underworld. As the sun traversed the sky, Ra's radiant presence illuminated the world, casting warmth and light upon the land below. But lurking in the shadows of the celestial realm was the malevolent chaos serpent, Apophis, whose sinister intent threatened to plunge the world into eternal darkness. Apophis, with his coiled form and venomous fangs, embodied the very essence of chaos and destruction. Each day, he lay in wait, seeking to devour the sun and shroud the world in darkness. Yet, Ra, with unwavering resolve, stood as the guardian of order, ready to confront the serpent's nefarious schemes. With each dawn, Ra engaged Apophis in a titanic battle that spanned the heavens. Lightning crackled and thunder roared as the two adversaries clashed, their cosmic struggle shaking the very foundations of existence. Yet, Ra's divine light was a beacon of hope amidst the chaos, a symbol of order and stability in a world fraught with peril. Though the battles were fierce and the dangers great, Ra never faltered in his duty. With each victory over Apophis, he ensured the continued existence of the cosmos, maintaining the delicate balance between order and chaos. His unwavering resolve and indomitable spirit were a testament to his divine sovereignty, 
standing as a pillar of strength and guidance for all who dwelled in his domain. And so, as the sun set on another day, Are emerged triumphant, his luminous presence banishing the shadows of darkness and ushering in a new dawn of hope and renewal. For Are, the journey was never-ending, but with each step, he illuminated the path forward, guiding his followers towards a brighter tomorrow. Chapter 6, Anubis's Role in the Afterlife In the sacred realm of the dead, Anubis stands as a towering figure, his form draped in robes of ebony and gold, a solemn sentinel tasked with guiding souls on their journey to the afterlife. As the guardian of the necropolis, Anubis oversees every aspect of the transition from the mortal realm to the eternal beyond. His duties begin long before the soul's departure from the earthly plane. Anubis is the master of embalming, a meticulous process by which the bodies of the deceased are preserved for eternity. With the precision of a surgeon and the reverence of a priest, Anubis oversees the embalming rituals, ensuring that each body is treated with the utmost care and respect. But Anubis's role extends beyond mere preservation. He is also the arbiter of justice in the afterlife, presiding over the weighing of the heart ceremony. In this solemn ritual, the heart of the deceased is placed on one side of the scales, while the feather of truth is placed on the other. Anubis observes with unwavering gaze as the scales tip, measuring the weight of the soul's deeds against the purity of the feather. For those whose hearts are heavy with sin and wrongdoing, Anubis decrees a fate of eternal torment in the depths of the underworld. But for the righteous and virtuous, those whose hearts are as light as a feather, Anubis grants the ultimate reward, passage to the paradise of the afterlife, where they may dwell in eternal peace and serenity. Yet, Anubis's role as judge is not one of harsh condemnation, but rather of compassionate discernment. He understands the complexities of human nature, the struggles and triumphs that define each soul's journey. And so, even in the face of wrongdoing, Anubis offers the opportunity for redemption, guiding the souls of the departed towards spiritual growth and enlightenment. In the annals of Egyptian mythology, Anubis stands as a symbol of both justice and mercy, a steadfast guardian of the eternal balance between light and darkness. Through his guidance and wisdom, he ensures that every soul finds its rightful place in the tapestry of existence, guiding them towards the eternal embrace of the afterlife. Chapter 7, Batet and the Sacred Cats In the pantheon of Egyptian gods, few are as beloved and revered as Batet, the radiant goddess of home, fertility, and protection. With her graceful form and fierce countenance, she embodied both the nurturing warmth of the hearth and the ferocious strength of the lioness. Bastet's divine presence was often depicted in the form of a lioness, her golden mane flowing in the breeze as she stood watch over the sun-drenched lands of Egypt. Yet, despite her formidable appearance, Batet harbored a gentle and compassionate spirit, particularly towards her sacred animal, the cat. Throughout the ancient world, cats were held in the highest esteem as symbols of Bastet's divine grace. Revered for their sleek beauty, graceful movements, and keen instincts, cats were believed to possess a special connection to the goddess herself. In times of trouble, Egyptians would call upon Bastet's protection by invoking the presence of her sacred felines, knowing that their watchful gaze would keep them safe from harm. But the significance of cats in ancient Egypt extended far beyond mere symbolism. These graceful creatures were seen as guardians of the home, warding off evil spirits and bringing prosperity to those who honored them. Indeed, it was believed that the presence of a cat in one's household would ensure good fortune and protection from malevolent forces. In temples dedicated to Batet, cats were pampered and revered, receiving offerings of food, drink, and even elaborate jewelry. To harm a cat was considered a grave offense, punishable by law and met with swift retribution from both mortals and the divine. Yet, Bastet's influence was not limited to the domestic sphere. As the guardian of the sun, she watched over the fields and forests of Egypt, ensuring the fertility of the land and the abundance of the harvest. In times of war, she lent her strength to the pharaoh's armies, protecting them from harm and guiding them to victory. Even in death, the bond between Batet and her sacred cats remained unbroken. Cats were often mummified and buried alongside their human companions, ensuring their safe passage into the afterlife and their eternal service to the goddess. Today, the legacy of Batet and her sacred cats lives on, inspiring awe and reverence in the hearts of those who seek her protection. From the bustling streets of modern Cairo to the serene temples of ancient Thebes, the spirit of Batet continues to watch over Egypt, her divine presence felt in every purr and every whisker of her beloved feline companions. And so, the tales of the Egyptian gods continue, weaving a rich tapestry of myth and legend that has endured for millennia. 
From the creation of the universe to the reign of the pharaohs, the gods of Egypt have left an indelible mark on the world, shaping the course of history and inspiring countless generations to come.